So everybody ready? Check. Okay, one, two, ready, ready go. Hey y'all, can I mix my T-Rex with your T-Rex and make some pretty babies? I am so addicted to picking up poop, you don't even know. Whoa! Did you see the paint job on that trike? Wow. Fresh spawns, veteran tamers, and all survivors in between. We'd like to welcome you to Rated Ark, the Ark Survival Evolved podcast. Fresh spawns, veteran tamers, and all survivors in between. We want to welcome you to episode two of Rated Ark, the Ark Survival Evolved podcast. Today is March 25th, 2016, and... Just like last week, I got Mr. Lumen in up in my sidecar this week, and he's going to take it away. You can reach the show by email at ratedark at gmail.com. You can tweet us at ratedark on Twitter, grab our RSS feed, get the show notes, and apply to join us in-game at ratedark.podbean.com. First, we'd like to take the time to introduce, we have two new players this week. You'll recognize many of us from last week, actually four of us. So I'm going to now switch it up and hit the new guys right up front. Mr. Rocket! Introduce yourself. You're a new voice this week. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey there, guys. My name's Rocket. I've been with the server for about like two, no wait, about like one or two months now. Probably a little less. But so far, I've been here for the down and the uprising of the server, and I'm going to stick with it. All right, Rocket. What level are you in game? I'm around level 68-ish. And what do you like to do? Like, what are your favorite things to do while you're on the island? Well, my favorite things to do, I like to... Legally and illegally to your tribe mates. Because <laughs> we all oh, know Oh, then I got you... nothing to say. Never mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> what are your interests in game? <laughs> well, I love taming. I love building for the community. And I, yeah, I just love building. And you love having fun, though, too, don't you? What is your idea of fun? Well. Yeah. I... <laughs> You're not going to get away from this. <laughs> Here comes that illegally bit, everybody. <laughs> Here comes... What's your idea of fun? Well, I like to hang out with Turk, and sometimes Esme, but usually I get kicked out within the first couple seconds. <laughs> I'm Only not allowed on her raft anymore. Me. I'm not allowed on her raft anymore. I am not allowed in Turk's basement. <laughs> or his castle. Absolutely. Or his yeah, yeah. So what hey, yeah, uh, Rocket, what's do? your fortitude? <laughs> yeah, what's your fortitude at, Rocket? <laughs> uh, some things are left better under, under said. So there, everybody, there is Mr. Rocket. And now we're going to introduce our second new voice to you. His name is Amarachi. He's level 23, and he's hailing from a real island out in the ocean. And he also plays with us on an island in Ark. So, Mr. Amarachi, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Yep, level 23 at the moment, and I've already lost two trikes, three dodos, and I've died so many times. I've got a 2x2 two two hut made of wood. I've just got into stone. So you're switching over now from wood to stone. So have you? do you have any active pets like right now? At the moment, nothing. Nah. I lost What's your everything. favorite pet that you've tamed so far? Yeah, it's got to be a dodo. I love oh, dodos. okay. Yes. Are you going to get another army? An army of your devoted dodo followers? I don't know, they don't seem to last so so long this time. No, yeah, they don't, no. <laughs> if you put them on Unless... aggressive, <laughs> they get at least four days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We totally should do that. So, next up, we have Mr. Cole. You want to say hey to everyone? Hey, everybody. I've gotten myself up to around level 74 or so. Um, I ended up building this gigantic base over on the uh, east side with a beautiful view of Herbivore Island. Uh, even built a water pen. But I barely have any dinosaurs there. It's just this giant echoing cavern now. And I actually am going to donate that to the community so everybody can use it and store their dinosaurs there or do whatever they want to do. And I'm just going to go off and build my own place somewhere uh, on the map. Um, Somewhere I haven't been before, so it's been kind of fun flying around trying to figure out where to build. That really is half the fun, you know, because it's nice to start out in an area that's familiar to you, but then after a while you feel like you quickly overgrow that area, and it's cool that you're going to 
open that up because I do think you're near some um, East Coast spawn points. So, like newbies, if they need a safe place to log out, that would be uh, pretty much an amazing condo to do so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's more like the entire condo building. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, definitely. So, we have uh, next uh, Luminin. You want to say hey to everyone? Hey, everybody. I'm Luminin. I think I'm around level 72. Uh, I had all the materials, and I found something to do with them. My box grew up today. So it's no longer a strudel box. No, it's now a fire watch tower, and I have a mobile home, too. Oh, wow! A cereal oh, box. That's awesome. So did you, like, make a houseboat, or is that what you're referring to? Uh, or is it... No, no, a little bit bigger. What it's is a... it? It's a Bronto. <gasps> did you yeah. get a platform saddle for your Bronto? I did. It took a little oh, while. Man, I had to make a trip awesome. up north and almost freeze to death again. But uh, <laughs> totally worth it. Awesome. That is really cool. So how about you, City? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, hi. I'm City. Um, I'm level. I don't even know what level I am. I never check. I just play. Yeah. Um, what I like about Ark is that when you start this game, everybody is the same we don't have you know special powers or anything like that you're either a male or female and i like the females because if you have to look at something running away from you it might as well be that right and uh <laughs> there's no other uh uh powers or anything like that you you make your own weapons you build your own builds and the only way that you survive is uh, by being smarter than some of the other people or faster Right? Or faster, yes. Or faster. <laughs> Absolutely. I think that's one of the things that um, appealed to me about this game, too, honestly, was the fact that, you know, no matter the amount of time or whatever, you still start out with the same set of weapons and you still have the ability to acquire those weapons. And it's all about how you use them, how long it takes you to acquire, as opposed to. You know, if you have 90 hours a week to devote to a raid to get the special magical orange level weapon, then that's what I like. Everybody starts at the same level and you get to choose how advanced you are and when you hit that those advancements. So I totally agree. Yep, yep, exactly. And, and you know, you all start off naked on yeah. an island and you got to figure out, man, in a hurry too. Absolutely. Just start punching trees and, and there's your new life. So. I don't know really what level I am either this week. It was in the 60s. I don't know. Um, and I also have like a whole bunch of engrams I haven't even touched because I'm just pretty much building right now. Like I'm just wanting to figure out, you know, how I want my base to look and building up my walls and all that jazz. So. Oh, I know. Yeah. I've changed my base about, oh, I don't even know how many times now. And uh, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, but it, it, uh, you start getting a little nitpicky after a while. I think yeah. you've been too close to coal and, and turk. You may have been. I also may have, too, because I'm like, do I really want this wood? Maybe I want the stone. So I've been just, luckily, the island, that little island that I live on is full of stone. So I've just been going all up and down the river trying to get as much as I possibly could. But So does that change? Uh, that's because the beavers ate half of your old house? Yeah, or that's you're... also, <laughs> uh, that is a very good point. And believe me, that was a huge part of my decision to go. At least the base and everything goes stone. Because, yeah, last week, those beavers were pretty rough on my wood. So... That's all I'm going to say. Um, I'm not going to touch that with it. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, going on to loot drops. <laughs> this is where we're going to cover any shout outs and listener feedback and all that jazz. So Luminin, did you have a shout out that you thought would be a great one to put out today? Absolutely. I wanted to give a shout out to at Jet's tweeter. It was his birthday this past week. So, uh, community manager's birthday. Congratulations on another year, Jet, and thank you for all that you do for us. Also, the associate producer, too. So, And this dude wears a lot of hats. Associate producer, community manager, and Q&A supervisor. So, he wears all of the hats. So, happy birthday, Mr. Hat Man. Um, yeah, I also wanted to give a shout out to some of our new members on the island. We had Smash em Good, and we have Mr. Lee Harvey, and Timon, or Timon and Mr. McBain. I'm not quite sure what everybody chose for their in-game names, but those are our newbies that joined ARC via our 
our Cross Realm Rebellion gaming group. So welcome to the island, everybody. And if you need any help, just give us a shout out. And also I wanted to thank at nerdygamer 3 r triple six for giving us a shout out on Twitter to let us know that they are indeed enjoying the show. So thank you very much because that, that takes some time just to track us down and let us know. And I really appreciate that when you do so. So thank you, everybody. And also, Lee did send us a really awesome email, too, telling us how much he enjoyed the show. And he had just bought the game, and he was looking for a podcast, and hopped right on aboard. So all of you who are just buying the game, and you want a nice, cozy place to start learning, hey, you're welcome to come and join us. So that's uh, you can find all that contact info at ratedarc.podbean.com and all that jazz. So. We'll lock you in Turk's basement. You'll learn much. Yeah, we're lucky on Turk's base of it. Anybody have any shout outs that you want to give this week? You know, just a shout out to all our new players. You know, it's exciting to see the community grow. Uh, I've had time to play with a few of you guys, and you all seem pretty awesome. Absolutely. You know what else is awesome? Fresh from the Forge, we have some ARC news. Are you guys ready to dive in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of ARC news. There <laughs> really is. Good. I'm ready to hit that E key. Let's go. <laughs> That's right. So, you guys, um,. City did post something about some new gear stuff, Luminan. Do you know what he was talking about? Because, do you know? What what new gear I, stuff are you posting? Uh, on Twitter, I saw something and I, I had retweeted it. Uh, something about tech gear. I, I haven't seen mm -hmm. a whole lot, just a mm -hmm. couple pictures, but it looks super, super cool. So, Cole, you chimed in. Do, I haven't seen it. Did you see it or what? What's... I haven't seen the actual gear itself, but I, I saw, um, I think it was in upcoming patch notes or something that was talking about tech gear being like the next level after riot gear so oh yeah, wow. if you if you can imagine um tron and the way yeah. they did the last movie of tron and they have like these lighted um outlines of your what is it clothes uniform yeah yeah. yeah yeah it's kind of like that they, they were showing that that's what i saw and i and i uh uh, looked at it briefly that Lumina when he uh, uh, tweeted it, but I had to do something. I couldn't read the story, so I don't know what's going on with it. But the picture looked really cool, like everybody says. Awesome. That is cool. So we'll definitely have to keep our eyes out for that. And Lumina, you, Lumina, now I'm calling you Lumina. Luminan! <laughs> City always makes me call you Lumina. <laughs> We're just going to rename you. We're going to rename you. I, I rename everything. At school, at man. school. Even our tribe mates. Absolutely. So, so Luminan, build 237 was late. And then there was Cole added in that they actually made an announcement that it was going to be dropping tonight. It, it said, I saw a thingy on the patch notes that said like 10 p.m. Eastern. So do we have any confirmations that it has dropped? Have you guys... I As know. of uh, about 20 minutes ago, it had not yet, so it is about an hour late, uh, which, again, shocker, oh no. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, so, but we do have some info on what the patch notes is going to include. Did you want to share those with us? Sure, we'll uh, go spelunking right into that. Absolutely. <laughs> they are bringing back the swamp and snow caves, Ooh. which... Uh, you know they they actually had these out before and they we, they pulled them because they weren't quite ready and they had a lot of a lot of issues now these are heavily geared towards high level survivors those cave, caves are going to include can uh high end loot advanced artifacts and more clues about the origins of the ark which you know super super exciting Absolutely. now they they have it looks like they've just recolored the uh the bigfoots or whatever so they're going to include yetis in these caves which is going to be super, super I cool. I hope those are tameable, because that sounds awesome. That's exactly what somebody was, I was does. reading. Yeah. Well, I mean, can you imagine next patch, is, you know, for Christmas, they give us Santa hats. We just throw a Santa hat on these things. Oh, they man. The last one. It would be nice if we could have kept them beyond the uh, beyond the event. Well, even if we did, it probably would have been gone. Cause I think this is when we yeah. lost all of our stuff, because every server we played on got white. Yep. So, so we bought our own. <laughs> But I know, Hence right? the name of our tribe, too. Yeah, right? wiping is overrated. That's why it's called wiping. Toilet paper sales on our server. Yeah. 
I yeah. didn't. Re- yeah, that's right. Um, but if anybody's curious, uh, so the GPS coordinates for the new world slash new snow cave is twenty nine thirty one, and for the swamp cave, it is sixty two thirty seven, and those are latitude longitude. I was gonna say that's latitude and longitude. I have been all last night was placing. Um, Little surprise loot boxes. I started on the south coast of the island. And so you guys can, like, there's loot. There's scuba gear, long neck rifles, trank darts, GPSs, just random yummy things that I'm hiding in unlocked loot. Some are painted, some are not. So. I know somebody's getting to jump on Easter. Yeah, I know. That's, you know what? Get this. Because I was already doing it, and our newbie, Mr. Smash, actually was like, hey, you, sh- you could be painting those boxes and it would totally like roll into our Easter. And I'm like, oh, you are amazing. So I actually busted out my cyan paint. It was like dazzling them up. So, and I, my and favorite I, color. I, it is cool. I totally switched my gear over to that now. Cause it's one, I had a lot of it and two, it looked really cool. So what color yeah. is it? Cyan. It's like a turquoise, a, like a light sky blue turquoise. It's pretty cool. Okay. I don't see that color. Yeah. Oh, but then you'll see the wooden ones that are brown. Like my my uh, dragon on my one of my other servers is actually cyan and black. He's amazing. Ooh, that's gorgeous. So we are heading into Easter holidays. Have you guys saw any eggs in game yet? Has so that hasn't dropped it either. Then has it or no? Yeah, I think that's with not until two thirty seven. Oh, yep. Okay, all right. But who wants to tell everybody what comes with our Easter holidays? Chop on in. Yeah, City, you you spoke first, so tell everybody what's going to be in store on the Ark for Easter. Um, chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to paint you a pro, doc, uh, pro cop. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I really would love to see. Um, so with this Easter thing, it's the excellent adventure event. And during this limited time event, we can collect special bunny eggs across the Ark that we can paint or use in recipes to craft bunny-themed items, like bunny ears or a bunny costume or the Procoptodon, which is basically the kangaroo. (laughs) Um, Then um, you'll also have to keep an eye out for the bunny dodo rex, which will roam throughout the island. I want to see this. I want to see it, but then I'm going to run screaming the other way. Yeah, maybe I just want to fly over it. That's yeah, what I do. we'll and take then, the community quets and like everybody <laughs> pile on and like go drag it down. Well, how do you think yeah. it's gonna work? Is it just gonna be like a bunch of bunny ears that you can put on? Just like yeah, like, like for some reason I can't really picture that in the game. Yeah, the bunny. It's kind of like Christmas. They had like the Santa hats that you could put on the uh, the mounts, or you put on yourself. So it's basically like a skin that you would put on the saddle, or a skin you would put on your helmet. Oh, okay. Now I get it. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. If you want to, you're going to put the links in the show notes. And one of the links does include the picture rocket. So if you want to see like what it kind of give a glimpse of what we're going to be being able to do and see in game, it's right there. It's pretty cool. So no chocolate then. No chocolate. Oh, I just pasted the picture for you, Rocket. This game sucks. No. Oh you know God. what? Yeah. The kangaroo the- is adorable as a bunny. <laughs> you just looked, I know, isn't it? Oh it looks so God. real. Like- it is awesome looking. Wow, look at that. It makes me want to go find one and paint one just like that. That's awesome. That's and those awesome. yetis? Oh my God. Must have one. <laughs> so up, they're saying like for the week of March 27th, So far, it's posted that we can also expect to see a new dino, the woolly rhino, a new dino, the Eurpaterid. Eurpaterid? It's a sea scorpion, so that's going to be interesting. And a new dino called the Dunkleistos. What? Dunkleistos. Dunkleistos. Prosis. Um, called this, it's a salmon thingy, so. <laughs> salmon thingy. <laughs> That's your technical I, terminology. <laughs> well, if you look at it, it is a giant salmon. Now it's, uh, and what's interesting about this is they, they think that you're going to be able to, like, put these in a little pond and then close them and then harvest from them regularly. No. Um, now, you don't, these are not aggressive, so unlike the piranhas, they won't swarm you as soon as you touch water, but if you hit yes. one, they do swarm you. Oh, sweet. Man. So they're the beavers. <laughs> they might eat your house. Well, they might eat your raft, so I don't know. 
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then also, being that um, piggybacking on uh, Mr. City's feelings towards chocolate, no chocolate being an arc and that's sucking. Well, apparently, Trendy Entertainment also thinks that Wild Card sucks because they want to sue them. <laughs> So, no chocolate for them. No chocolate for them. <laughs> that's no my soup hor- for you today. Yeah. No soup for you. Yeah, that's good job. No soup for you. Uh yeah. So this would we would we hit when this whole story hit, obviously us as arc loving people and survivors of the island were a little peeved. And there are on the internet right now a lot of articles that stem from one article that stems from Kotaku. So uh, we will put that link to Kotaku's article in the show notes. But the article that I liked because it spoke to me and it's exactly how I looked at the situation and it broke it down without all the other in the article was from GameZone.com. So it pretty much goes over and it was like, Studio, I'm going to just paraphrase or read some snippets, but Studio Wildcards Open world dinosaur game Ark Survival Evolve has seen plenty of success, and even though it hasn't made a full release, the game is currently in early access on both Steam and the Xbox One and has been receiving some fairly large updates recently. But it says while the game's success is uncontested, the developers behind the game are being sued by the Dungeon Defenders developer, Trendy Entertainment. And according to court documents acquired by the Kotaku, uh, the long story short was that Pretty much in what everybody gathered from this is like Trendy Entertainment is going after Wildcard and saying, and there's a bunch of he said, she said pretty much going on right now, but they are saying that the former Trendy employee breached his contract with Trendy to work on Survival Evolved. And they're calling themselves a competitor. Dungeon Defenders, they're looking at themselves that Sur- Ark Survival Evolve is a competitor. As far as I knew, Dungeon Defenders was not a dinosaur sandbox game. <laughs> so I don't know how they're justifying the word competitor. But yeah, that's what they're doing. So right now, in addition to that, Trendy claims that the former developer poached developers from the used trade secrets from Trendy and used them on Survival Evolved. And Trendy, in turn, wants Studio Wildcard to pay them a lump sum of money or meet them in court. And if, oh, <laughs> I know, right? And if the developers go to court in April, Ark Survival Evolve will be taken off the PC and Xbox One until the case has settled. Now, and this is GameZone said, the real question here is, how does an open world survival game compete against an action RPG tower defense game? And how has it had a devastating impact on Trendy's business? So if you want, and that is the first thing that I pulled out when I was reading Kotaku's very long, and it appeared to be, to my opinion, slightly biased. I thought, how is that even possible? So I have included the link to both Game Zones and Kotaku's and also the forum post that has a lot of, you know, player feedback. And we all kind of pulled from the same thing. Like, what? Those are two totally different games. So do you guys have any just like, what was your first takeaway when you read the article or just hearing that? Just if I had to ask. So well, I'm I, I agree with you. When I when you uh, posted that, um, I can't even remember where it was. I think it was on Twitter. But I went into it and I read it, and I was like, "This, this is a bunch of whiny cry baby. I want some of the money that I'm not making on my game, and yours is doing good." And that's kind of the way I feel. And and both of the games are totally different from each other. And I don't know, did somebody make it in their basement and have a drink one night and then they decided that they needed it? I don't know. Has anybody played Dungeon exactly. Defenders? I think Kat, okay. I think uh, yes, I, yes, I have, because I used to play it on my old uh, Xbox 360. And I want you to know, the only reason I ever played it was because it was like the free game of the month or something like that. I played this game for two days and then I realized that the game is just full of just... I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> Without a dinosaur roar bleeping you out, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, yes. Do, do you feel it's that it's just... in any way comparison to the two? Because you play both. Would you go, oh my god, this totally reminds me of Ark Survival Evolved? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> okay. Anyway, because 
like okay so the game uh dungeon defenders is just it's broken like everyone has like modders on their game they have hackers that like ddos each other on there it's just it's annoying to play because every time like somebody steals a gun for you or something they're like i'm a ddos you i got a ddoser so yeah oh, i stopped wow. playing a long time ago so has anybody else played dungeon defenders i can't say i have but uh you know, my response on Twitter was, uh, oh, you know, just new skin for Gigas. Put them in suits, send them into the courtroom. Done. It's gone. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> did, did anybody else have any thoughts on the matter to take away before we hop on to our next segment or our next piece of news? Was that a no? All right, moving on. We have... Uh, Would you say Lumina? Yeah, Lumina. <laughs> Susan Claire Steiglitz Brown, um, Browning, which is also the co-founder and former business manager at Studio Wildcard, tweeted out a picture of some sample models for ARC, and they actually are something that I want all of them. Do you guys? I, yes. How awesome I really would that be to, I know, right? How awesome would that be to be able to purchase the dinos uh, that you are taming or that you're playing with in-game? Like, that would be really awesome. So, what are... Do you guys agree? Like, what are your thoughts? Because you can see that the picture. calling out to me. The dodo? Yep. <laughs> the Do you think they're going to make it so that you can actually, like, custom build your that own? That would be really cool. I don't know. That would be that... awesome. Wouldn't that be neat? Like, you could uh, do your whole paint job. Like, yeah, they, yeah, they had, like, the paint pit program on the page that you ordered it from. I don't yes. know. That would probably be, like, really a lot of work to do. But I uh, think that would be pretty cool. It'd definitely be worth it. Well, I don't think it'd be that bad with the uh, advances in 3D printing of late. Ooh. I mean, you know? I don't know. Yeah, that would be awesome. Because Cole would have purple. All of the purple. Of <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I found a really fun topic I thought was cool to touch base on. Um, you, It was pulled from the... Um, SurviveTheArc.com forum, and I had participated in it, and I thought it would be kind of cool to see, like, what you guys thought, and I did include the link to that forum in the post, so if you want to participate in it, you can too, but it was titled, You Know You've Been Playing Too Much Arc When... And I was like, I know I've been playing too much Arc when I walk out to my vehicle at night, and the first thought I have is to scan the woods for dinos like they're gonna jump me before i get into my vehicle <laughs> like i feel like i need to always be looking over my shoulder when i'm outside and <laughs> i swear to god like i totally knew i was playing way too much arc when i was like doo, 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 wait a minute <laughs> there could be a car no over there <laughs> like i thought oh my god i don't have to worry about dinosaurs it's 2016. so the other part i find like, I'll be out in the yard. I'm like, oh, I really want to fence here. Or I want to fence this in. It would be totally amazing to be able to just go grab a dino, construct a fence, and then, like, place my fence and click, click, click. There's my fence. ta -da! So that would be awesome. But yeah. So, Cole, uh, do you have any, like, what makes you know that you've been playing ARC too much? I, I, I lately, because it's been spring break and all I've been doing is playing, I, I've been dreaming about ARC. But then there's just random people from reality in it, and we're all walking down the street, and then you see, like, a raptor run by, and it's like, oh, crap, where's my weapons? And so a normal, regular dream will just suddenly turn dinosaur deadly. Or I, you know, I'm at my, at my house, and it's like, hey, I need to, I want to get rid of this chair or this bench and create a chair or whatever. And it's like, hey, well, where's my my crafting table and I'll just go make a new chair and so it's really weird and the subconscious <laughs> is just as bizarre as you think it could be because random things will just pop into what seemingly feels like the most normal dream ever and then you know suddenly dinosaurs pretty much can anybody so would you else mind if I add on to that go for it yeah has this been happening to you <laughs> this has I've had about three dreams about it that I can remember but the best one was when I was dreaming about actually being in Slipgator's base. Like, I, okay, I guess what happened is I guess I was like a new recruit of the Slipgator community. And then Slipgator let me into his house, but I guess I like screwed something up and I like blew his base up or something. <laughs> Imagine that. I know. Totally so then, something that you so then, so do, then, right? so then after that, I got like criticism from around the world and I had people like knocking on my door telling me to like. <laughs> Go to hell and stuff like that. Oh my god. 
Yeah, that seems about right. <laughs> I told Turk this story, and he said... Oh my god. Hey. He said, get out of my basement. <laughs> yeah, he said, like, get off my lawn, Rocket. <laughs> oh my god, that is funny. I can totally relate to both cases, though. <laughs> yeah. Last week, I was walking out to the car, and I guess it was birds moved around in the leaves. I was, told I was running. <laughs> Oh my God. Earlier this week, I was dreaming that I had to. Oh man, I gotta go check. I think these dodos have laid eggs. Oh, wait, what the heck? <laughs> I was half awake at that point, though. So, and, and you totally can tell that your real world definitely does experience like a. Uh, while you're sleeping, it bleeds into your dreams, and that is really no difference, apparently, uh, from the video games we play. So uh, I pressed E while trying to get inside of a car. Oh my god, you're so silly. <laughs> you, do you stand in front of the fridge and like try to access your E menu? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm pressing about, F. Why is that? <laughs> why is this ever game? How about you, City? Have you experienced any anything like? This? Oh yeah, you know I'm on spring break too, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> You know, I've been playing a <laughs> lot here this past week. for the rest of your life. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I'm starting to think about, you know, I need to start getting the the yard in, in shape for spring. And I'm looking at the resources and how I can incorporate them in. I'd like to put a fence here and a stone wall there, just like you were saying earlier. And, it's, and it's, I'm like, wait, I can't use them <laughs> in the game. <laughs> I've actually got to be in the game to use those things. I can't take them from my backyard and put them in the game. But uh, then I'm always thinking about redesigning stuff where I'm, you know, just before you fall asleep, you're like, oh, man, I should have taken that wall out and move it over here yes. and rebuild this. Yes. And, yeah, too much sometimes. <laughs> you know, that happens to me all the time, City. Oh, I know. And then the chocolate. I never see the chocolate. No chocolate. And you can't. Yeah, you move your balls. a little bit, and he'll show you a whole new meaning of chocolate. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'll have my own uh, container. How about you, Amarachi? Has has Ark ever bled into your real world? Nah, it hasn't bled so much, but it's just I spend so much time reading up on guides and how to do things. It's just, all this research. I never get anything done in the game. <laughs> it's That's because you just got to dive in. Just have to dive on in. Don't worry about researching. Just, just go with the flow. <laughs> really, just, just in, reach out by. to one of us. We'll all help you. We'll, you'll learn more from us than anybody else. Yeah, just buy and just get things done. Get get it all out of the way and everything. Yeah. So, so would you classify yourself a play? Like, do you like? Do you feel more confident in your gameplay when you do do like a lot of preparation so that you know what you're going to encounter in game? Is that like more or less how you like to approach your gaming? It's just reading all the FAQs and everything, and then when once you're in the game, that nothing is there like it, like you imagined it was. We are moving on to the main topic of the show. It is picking a tribe. What do you look for? What do you recommend? Do you need a tribe? Is there Are they more harm than good? What are some things that can happen, both good and bad? So I asked everybody to just list some pros and cons. And I talk a lot, so I'm not going to start us off. I think we're going to do some uh, cont contribution roulette and hit up <gasps> Amarachi. Amarachi, tell us. <laughs> The pros. What are some pros that you feel uh, towards uh, tribes in ARC? What are some positive aspects to being in a, a tribe, something that you've experienced so far in, in ARC? Well, when you're playing a game like this, I mean, you have to play with friends. It Okay, you can join a server. If you're going to join a server, there's more people on there. Just go for it. Just make friends. You know, make make memories around this game. Yeah, hey, Amarucho, we're looking forward to getting to know you better, too. Yeah. Um, especially me. I, I mean, I'm kind of a, you know inquisitive fella sometimes. And uh, I'm really interested in learning more about, you know, Cyprus and your culture and where you live. And I know that we can do that in game when we're playing together. And I, I'm excited about that. So welcome aboard and welcome to our tribe. Absolutely. And that's the beauty Thanks. of our Thanks. tribe because we have like people from like worldwide that we just get to talk around with each other. Like it, it's it's just a great thing to do. Yeah, and I think we've touched on that before. Like also not only geographically, age wise, 
and just um, job wise, like we have, we're so diverse. We're such a, a diverse group, but we all connect through playing this game. And, and that also helps us learn about each other and all that stuff. So that is, I mean, that's the perk of being a gamer is being yeah, able to share a game, you know, a game that you love with people from all over. So I, I, I agree, City. I think it's pretty cool that Amarachi woke up at the butt crack of dawn to uh, hop in and start yakking with us about art. But Luminin, tell us uh, your pros and cons. What you, what do you think about being in a tribe? Well, uh, first and foremost, when you go to join a tribe. Talk to them a little bit, get to know the people. You want to make sure you have a similar mindset or, you know, you have kind of goals kind of line up. Um, first one that you want to find one that lets you do what you want to. You know, we've said this several times. It isn't a job, it's a game. And that's the that's the kind of scary thing about our job because it's real time and it's very realistic. Um, one of the, the big pros for a, for a tribe, information is readily, mostly available. If I have a question... I just shoot it out in TeamSpeak or in tribe chat or global chat since it's pretty much just us. And, you know, usually Turk or City's like, oh, well, duh, it's this. I'm like, oh, of course. <laughs> uh, That's true. Another thing is the social aspect that keeps you coming back. You make friends from all over the place that you have no way of contacting apart from logging in and playing the game. Well, that's what you're going to do. Uh, as far as cons go, um, if I was on a oh. PvP server, I'll, I'd probably have one. Not. Uh, I might find one someday, doubtfully. <laughs> so what are some cons for tribes, Mr. Luminin? Um, eventually, I think I'll probably find one someday. Now, if I was playing on a PvP server, I'd probably have several. Seeing that I'm not, I'm playing with a great group of people in a tribe I like and love. I don't have Awesome. Any. Good, good. And you're fairly new to the game, too, so you don't really have any tribe jade going on. So that's right, a good yeah. thing. That is a good thing. So how... I will send you the check later. What? We'll send you the check later. <laughs> oh boy. That's Don't a lot of cementing later. paste. <laughs> um, some of my pros for tribes was I thought that they definitely were very beneficial on a PvP server because you need power in numbers. You know, you're not going to be able to stand up against an alpha tribe when you're in, like, your little hut with some gates up and the ten dinosaurs you tamed. You're going to need max numbers, max artillery, all bodies, gathering, building, and defending. And that is the nature of the PvP servers. So I definitely think tribes. But you also, I mean, when you sign up for a tribe, psh, you know, that, that'll be covered in my con area. But the shared XP alone for being in a tribe is pretty cool. Because if you go and do stuff, that's one thing I really love about, about ARC is that if you're out chopping trees together, you get XP. If you're crafting stuff and then in the vicinity somebody else is, you're getting XP. I just think it's really cool. And then also um, the whole help that you get with taming and sharing. Like, you can tame each other's help each other tame stuff, fill the inventory with the with the narcotics and the berries. And if you're not in a tribe, you you pretty much just feel like you're on the outside looking in, wanting to help, but you can't help. But then they also added in that tribe alliance. I thought that was pretty cool. So I think that's kind of a gray area. Like, yeah, I'm still in my tribe. I don't really understand because then you can merge and it's just all this stuff. So, but at least you can share XP, help each other tame and share equipment and all that stuff. So unless you want to go and unlock everything and, and share with everyone, uh, being in a tribe definitely is helpful. But the cons at the end of the day, you are indeed at the mercy of your tribe leader. And some of us, more than others, have learned the hard way that the settings that they choose to have can be changed on the fly. Like, you can join a tribe and they will have personal snap, personal build, personal tame, you know, and you feel nice and cozy. And then let's say they have a bad day in there, they want to turn like some crazy dictator and they're like, I want all of the buildings and all of the dinosaurs. They just like switch some stuff and like anything after that, you know, it it's theirs. Or if they kick you... That's very catastrophic. And when you play a game like this, you trust is huge. So, you know, if you're in a PvE server, definitely go shopping. Definitely 
feel like the people you're joining have the same values as you or else you could pretty much be out in the cold and rebuilding somewhere and very jaded. So, I mean, tribes, very good, also can have a dark side. So uh, definitely, like, research the tribe before you join. And also, tribe leaders, think about other people before you do these crappy things to others. You know, I mean, you got to live with yourself at the end of the day. So don't be a crappy tribe leader. So there's my pros and cons. <laughs> Does anybody have anything they want to toss in before we move on to punching trees? Just saying, we could totally send Rocket in. He could do a solo on an alpha tribe. I mean, just, you know, just <laughs> like his dream. He'll, just, he'll go in and just, <laughs> this thing will blow up. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's our little, uh, he's our little secret. Rocket. Secret rocket. Nobody else has an engram for but us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I'm just punching. Yeah. Secret weapon. Yeah, he's our secret weapon. I need that wood. I guess I'm punching some trees. I'm just punching trees. This is where we will share some tips that we have for new players. City, what are some tips that you have for some new players on ARC? Oh, when you first get on, really just be patient. You're going to die. You're going to lose all your stuff. You're going to kill your animals by accident. You're gonna lose uh, tames. Your birds are gonna fly off way up in the sky. And just be patient with all that stuff. That you'll get it, you'll, you'll understand it, you'll, you'll figure out how to work it. You'll reach out to tribe mates, they'll give you assistance. I can't tell you how many times I've had my birds recon by uh, Turk or you or, or you know all, all of our other tribe mates. And uh, the other thing is take your time, pick your location, location, location. It, uh, it matters. And uh, depending on the experience level that you are when you're starting out, um, talk to some of the veterans. They can tell you where it's easier to start off. And then if you want to, you know, ingrain up a little higher in a little tougher area, then they can tell you where that is as well, too. And... I'm still waiting for chocolate. Oh, right. Well, I don't have chocolate, but I do recommend that you put beds on all of the things. <laughs> that is a prelude to my damn east key segment. But if you build a raft, put a bed on it. It's kind of like Beyonce. If you want your raft, put a bed on it. I'm serious. Like, put beds on your rafts. You will, If you lose them, you can at least fast travel. Take all your junk off before you fast travel, too. Because the minute you... First off, we're in Punching Trees. I need to teach you about fast traveling. You can, it's kind of like the ghetto version of a portal or a summoning stone or a hearthstone if you're a wild person like I am. You can look at your bed, hit your E key, and then you can fast travel to another bed that you or a tribe mate has. And that's also labeling your beds is very important. Because when you die and you go to spawn and you have all these spawn points and you really don't know, some people have beds behind locked doors. You can spawn into somebody's house that has their door locked, so that sucks. So you don't want to do that. Uh, but I do recommend for your personal beds, label them yours so you know and put them on your beds and put them in um, your house because when you die, it kind of sucks when you don't have a place to spawn. And Luminin, do you want to hop on to uh, some punch and trees advice? You're next. I sure do. Just a bit of advice for all those people when you first start out and you level up a few times. Don't spend the anchor points. Save them. You know, you want to use those when you get to a higher level. And you kind of know what you're going for, what you need. There will be a few things that you need to start off with. You know, your, your basic uh, buildings or uh, maybe some armor or tools. Definitely tools. But for the most part, you know, don't don't pour stuff into. Oh, look, there's a, a compass. I don't know if I'm gonna ever use that or how to make it yet. Save them when you hit those big levels, those big big uh, standing stones or stepping stones, like level 60, 65, 70. When you get the big stuff and it costs a lot, then you're gonna look back and be like, oh well, you know, I should have saved that because I could have used it here. That's kind of where I'm at right now. And uh, Turk's trying to talk me through a mind wipe, and it doesn't sound very fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, probably not. So, uh, Mr. Cole, what is some punching tree advice that you have? 
Well, I have a couple of things. Here's a huge, huge one. And this has actually been happening even with some of the new folks, even on our server. If you're running down the beach or running around and you see an egg, and of course, this is a different than the Easter event, but it's an <laughs> egg. It's like a, a Bronto egg or, you know, a, a trike egg, turtle egg, whatever. You see these eggs on the beach. Don't pick them up if any of pretty. those dinos are anywhere nearby. If if there's a Bronto there and you see this big, bright blue, beautiful egg, don't pick it up because it will automatically attack you and every other Bronto that's in the area will also attack you. Um, they're very territorial about their eggs. The other one that I have to say is when you're leveling up and you get all the points to spend on health and stamina and weight and, all, and melee and all those types of things, don't forget about fortitude. You probably don't have to have a ton of it at the very, very beginning. But once you start getting into the higher levels, fortitude is actually really, really uh, important. And what it does is each level point that you spend increases your fortitude by two. So what that does is it increases the hypothermal and hyperthermal insulation and that it's up like a one to two ratio. And then at certain levels, it it's, uh, increases by five instead of four. So what it does is say if it's really hot outside, then you don't have to drink as much water. You don't lose as much water as quickly. Or if it's really cold out, you can handle the cold a little bit better. So you're not, you know, blasting through all of your food. And the other thing that comes with it, and this is the really, really good part, is especially on a PvP server, but also even if like you get hit by a, a Dilo's uh, spitting in your face type of thing, um, fortitude reduces tor gained. So like if that Dilo spits on you, you're going to have a green screen for a little bit less time for uh, each point of fortitude that you put in there. So then that way you'll be able to uh, get your uh, your back to the normal viewing area and kill that thing and harvest its body for the meat and the skin. So uh, always rem remember that fortitude is, is fairly important and something that you should uh, consider putting points into, especially when you get to the higher levels. That is advice that I wish I had when I first started, honestly. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. I went up and visited the city a little bit earlier this week. I almost froze to death on three occasions. <laughs> God, yeah. I know you ate like a hundred uh, meats when you were up there. Busy. It didn't even help. It did not help at all. It was horrible. I'm like, dude, what's your fortitude at? And you're like, four. I'm like, holy shit. You need to oh be like my God. 30. Well, you know, I have a lot of beavers in my place, and they drop pelt, and you can mm -hmm. make some fur gear from those beavers. So, I guess I need to finish the stone up protection around my face. So, you guys, when you go to kill the beavers, don't, like, make them go, Roar! I'm going to attack the nearest structure. <laughs> but it's a great place to get beaver, is my place. <laughs> Moving on to um, Amarachi, what are some punching tree tips that you have for newer players because you are kind of new but not you're just diving back into the game so is there some information that you want to give to some new players yeah pretty much once you get started you're going to buy once twice three times ten times a hundred times it's just going to happen and keep happening you understand that that's part of the world part of this game and there's going to be some sort of mythical beast that's going to res you and you've got that bluetooth thing in your arm once you understand all that, you can get to enjoying the game and understanding that you can maybe build a box and save some stuff for the next time as well, because you're just going to keep dying. Understand that, and you'll just you'll enjoy the game. That is so true, and I really wish that everybody could listen to what you just said, because it is, that is the game. You are surviving, and you don't always survive. So that is some excellent golden advice right there, Amarachi. I think I we can the, uh, all I think we can all attest to that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love your reference to the Bluetooth the work yes. a couple of weeks back. And he's like, What is that? I'm like, I, I don't know. But you know, eventually they're gonna update and you'd be like, Hey Siri or uh, okay Google and it'll be like, Yeah, all right, all right, we're good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So Rocket, do you have some punching tree advice that you would like to share with newer players? Well, I guess I can cover like the basics of defense and maybe a little bit of rating. 
So I was on a PvP server for like the first uh, couple weeks of me owning the game. I played on server 30 or something like that, official server 30. And one thing I can tell you is that you should always have spikes. Always have spikes because before you know it, you're going to have people like poking around your house, trying to like see in your windows, trying to see if you have any chests or not. You, you're you going to want to have a lot of, how do you say it? Defense? You are going to need a lot of defense. A lot of ammo? <laughs> Well, okay, Spikes? so one thing that I did is I tamed up a bunch of Demorphodons in my PvP server. Every time somebody came by my server and decided they were going to hit on my wall a little bit, I just opened up this little cage, and then, like, this, this it was like an entire swarm that just came out, like, after them. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Oh, that would have been beautiful to watch. <laughs> but you would have yeah, had to be online. <laughs> you would have had to totally been online when it happened, or else it was I like, oh. I think I actually do have a recorded, and I'll have to find it. Yeah, that would be I have, cool. like, a video of, like, two spinos coming at my house and then just turning around right away. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. So, And then yeah. if I were to cover the raiding part a little bit more, you're always going to want to find that angle to your enemy's object. So if you just have, like, a plain out uh, square base that you're raiding, you should always go for the lower corners because that... Okay, so because if you go for the lower parts, you're all, you're always going to get the best advantage to what you're doing. And I guess that's all I really have to say for now. Have you raided many bases? Like, was it in an individual raid on a PvP server, or were you in a group? I was in a group of a people that I trusted very well. It was a group of people that I knew in person and had been playing with for a while. Uh, tribe Wild. But our tribe came to an end when this... Okay, so when another tribe decided they were gonna raid us overnight, and yeah. Yeah, that really kind of sucks being on a PvP server. I really like the PvP servers that have, like, no offline raiding. I think that's really cool that they offer that because, I mean... I think the on the offline rating, like when you're when you're at work or sleeping and somebody's jacking your base up, that is so disheartening to log in and like everything you you know. But that's the nature of the beast. But I do like that people offer no like um, it's not definitely not on an official server. It's something that us unofficial owners reinforce to kind of make that nice area that you can still enjoy PVP without all of the offline BS. So, but some people enjoy that. So it's kind of cool and, to uh, offer that. Okay, so that, I was wondering so. if I can touch on one more thing. Go for it. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so the reason that we actually got raided is because we were actually planning to raid them for a while because I don't know, something happened where they like took out one of our spinos on accident and then they did all this other stuff that they claimed was on accident. So we started planning against them. And a little snitch that we didn't know uh, was in the group, and he went ahead and just, he snitched towards the other group, and that was <laughs> our ultimate demise, yep. Don't start drama. Yeah, just like in real, like, it's war times. You're going to have spies. And that honestly is the beauty of the game, too. If you like the PvP aspect, it's, oh my god, yeah. You're going to have spies. You're going to have double agents. And, yeah. So I can understand your frustrations, but, you know, you're like, eh. It's kind of the nature of the beast. So, anybody? Did I cover everybody? I think I did. Also, he was the one that opened the door. So. <laughs> He's the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He opened the door at night and turned snitches off our generator. Snitches get stitches, right? Yeah. <laughs> or snitches yep. get locked up in a in a little square box with handcuffs and fed for four weeks. So. But moving on to Alpha Tip City, you have quite a lot of Alpha Tips. What are some that you would like to share? Because you are pretty Alpha. The word city embodies the word Alpha. I'm, try I'm trying not to laugh there. My Alpha Tip of the week or past couple of weeks is um, columns. Build columns um, around areas that you know you can uh, bring animals in to tame, uh, whether it be Argents or uh, Brontos or I don't know about Spinos. I haven't tried it on Spinos yet. We'll have to get with uh, Rocket and, and uh, Twinkle on that. But if you set them up correctly, there's only one gap in between them and most animals can't go through them. Uh, a person can run through them 
or a uh, pterodon can fly through them, but uh, the larger animals, the larger ones cannot go through them. And uh, that's my long story short tip. That sounds like an, an excellent tip. Um, the only tip that I have, because I'm not really alpha, but I can give you, it's a pretty across the board tip, is always plan ahead. That's something that I have learned when I've tried to become an alpha, <laughs> tried to do bigger things and like put my, set my sights on something larger than what I normally do every day. And it's always planning ahead. And I've noticed that a lot of our loss in game can be avoided if we if we really take what we need with us for the, the whole goal that we're going for. So when you log in and you're like, I want to go tame this, take only what you need to do that. Leave all of your other valuables locked away somewhere else because you will die. And then your whole nerd rage will be increased because you have blah, blah, blah on you. And you had three guns and blah, blah, blah ammo and none of it you were using. And then you fill chat while you nerd rage. Oh my God, I just died or not. You know, like I feel like if you just take what you need, then leave everything else behind. That would be my best advice. And that is good for new and old, that planning ahead. That doesn't come easily for a lot of people, but for me, that is what I got. So, Luminan, do you have something to toss in the pile? I think uh, you do. First, I just want to say that, you know, I feel like you wrote that for me. When I no, when I, was saying it, <laughs> when I was saying it, I'm like, oh my God, this totally explains Luminan earlier this week. Honestly. Yep. Absolutely, 100%. <laughs> uh, that's actually what I wrote my uh, alpha tip about. Uh, if you're exploring on a bird, which is exactly what I was doing, I had all my nice, you know, my new gun and my all my darts and all my great stuff on me. And oh, I'll just fly over the swamp, you know, because swamp's such a nice... Anyways, place all of your items on the bird. Use the F key to access the bird, the bird's inventory, when you need it, when, uh, as needed, when needed. You can do that while you're flying, the F key does not function like the E key. You will not jump off. You have full access to everything that's there. You can drag it and drop it and just do whatever you want. Um, that's extremely helpful. Now, it is close to the E key. You have to be careful. Uh, yeah, we'll not go into that until the darn E key segment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it does make a big difference. And that is actually really good advice. I don't think I've ever even thought about relocating my stuff to the bird. Because when you do launch yourself off from your bird, your bird pretty much is just chilling in the air until you come back to get it. So, which, side note, you could totally use a spyglass if you don't know. If you're on the ground and you do hit the Ekeen and you manage to survive, if you have a spyglass on you, you can look through it, point it at your bird, and do your T commands. You can hit your T button and you can whistle to it and do all that jazz and you can bring it down from the sky. You don't have to somehow get back to your base and then get another bird and then fly out to that bird. You can use a spyglass, so that's awesome. F by chance you do survive, which in Luminance case, we'll leave that for later in the show. <laughs> yeah. And I was just, just gonna say, you know, I have I have a spyglass now. You know, Turk just got awesome. me in wearing armor. Like, I was running around like a nudist for forever, and he's like, wear the armor. I gave you armor. I'm like, I don't want to lose it. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Using the spyglass. Spyglass you know, is awesome. Typically, I just go, Cole, <laughs> I had an, an oopsie again. <laughs> right? Yeah, I actually, this morning, so our server resets. It restarts probably around, I'm West Coast, so it's about 1.30 in the morning. Like, every night it seems to restart. Well, it said you know, warnings, it's going to restart. You have 300 seconds, which basically means you have five minutes. So I rushed home, landed, put some stuff away, and then logged out. Well, when I logged in today, the previous save, so it like will save everything. And then when it restarts, it basically starts you from that point of where everything saved. I was not home. I was falling through the air, like really, really far falling through the air. Somehow. <laughs> and I didn't hit the E key, but when you log out and you're flying, you automatically fall. Oh, and, yes. Um, so falling, 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 thinking I was about to die, was getting a little nerd ragey and kind of <laughs> kind of <put> off <laughs> because I had definitely gone home last night. But um, when I uh, landed, I had just the barely little tiniest little sliver of my plus sign health thing 
So I survived it. And of course, then there's all these raptors and circos and everything everywhere. Nothing really bothered me. Knock on some damn wood, that's for sure. Awesome. But uh, then I was like, God, where's my bird? So I'm like, spyglass, looking around, trying to see it anywhere in the sky. It was standing behind me on the ground. Oh, no! <laughs> Wow, you really lucked out on that. Very much. So then wow. I got home and, yeah. But I love the, sp the spyglass thing because it's saved my ass many, many, many times. Awesome. But sometimes it can just be too far out of range for your spyglass. Yes. So having somebody come by and either pick you up to go get it or them going up if they're in the same tribe and just whistling it down for you. A huge, huge help. Moving on to Pimp My Hut. This is where we give you our building tips, tricks, and anything else to do with building. So, Luminin, what are some Pimp My Hut tips that you have to share with our listeners? Now, as, as usual, I will be the first. I am not the builder you want to model after. Um, as of last episode, I was still living in my nice little toaster box, uh, cereal box before. Um, up until today, I got on about 7.30 this morning and decided, all right, it's time to make this box a house, sort of a house. <laughs> right. Um, I, I've been gathering materials for a couple weeks. I, I did a crazy metal, I mean, I had like 1,500 ingots. I couldn't couldn't even pack it all on all my birds and fly back, so I left a lot of it. But uh, I have now have a like a 13-story fire tower with a landing platform on top, and uh, I hit level 70, and I got the... the Bronto platform saddle, and I made that, and I went out, and I, oh, I need a Bronto now. Tamed a Bronto, and I you know, built this really shabby-looking <laughs> uh, <laughs> house on it. It's my mobile home. Turk was laughing. Oh, it looks like a real... But uh, you know, I had a blast doing it, and we got this really huge tower that I can... You know, it was a lot of fun. So uh, if you really want to impress me, live in a toaster box, gather all your materials, and then get on early enough to know, and just throw it all up and just build it all in one over. And it's like, what the heck? Where did this come from? <laughs> It's like a jack-in-the-box. <laughs> yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> congratulations. Yeah, I'm awesome. going to have to come by and see I it know. Now. now I want to. Now I'm like, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I thought it was finding eggs, but it might be going to see what Luminin has constructed. <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. It, it's the, the fire watch tower. <laughs> the fire watch tower. Awesome. How about Cole? What are some pimp my hut tips that you have to share? What it comes down to is because I tend to take on really, really large projects, do the math. So first thing I do is I make a whole bunch of uh, foundations of whatever flavor. Just If I'm going to be building in stone, then I may use thatch or wood um, just so I can plan out where I'm going. Because the cheaper the material, it's not as heartbreaking when you destroy it to put down your real um, foundation. And then literally just do the math, you know, it's like, okay, well, this is going to be a 10 by 10 cube, so that means I need 100 foundations, and then you can, um, you know, how many walls am I going to need? Well, I'm going three high. Okay, well, how many, how many walls is that? So it's, do, and if you uh, want to know how many uh, materials you need total, so like you need 1,000 wood and you'll need, you know, 500 thatch, stuff like that, there are calculators out there. Um, to be able to use to figure out exactly what kind of materials you need and just do that. Then when you go out and do your gathering and stuff and you know how much to make because bringing back completed walls is way lighter than trying to bring back all of the materials. It's, you'd be making way more runs. So say, you know, help yourself out by uh, just doing the math. I should be taking your Pimp My Hut tips because I just fly in and go, ah, right, this looks like a good number, and then totally spend my time running back out to the woods to get more. So <laughs> I need your, I need to follow it, honestly. So Rocket, what is your Pimp My Hut tip? Besides how to well, erase in Google Docs? <laughs> I see we have a lot of fun going on in Google Docs right We now. do. <laughs> So what are some of your Pimp My Hut tips? So I was talking to Turk about this one earlier because he has a lot of good advice on this kind of stuff. 
and we were talking, and we were uh, saying to each other that you shouldn't set yourself up for failure because, like, it, okay, so let's say you find, like, this really nice rock formation, and you just want to build on this, but you don't actually know what you're going to build. You should always plan ahead, just like how Cole's, like how Cole said, you should just, uh, yeah, you, so you should do, like, all the math, you should get all the stuff you need, and after that, you should always know the basic of what you're going to build. You shouldn't just go in there and start playing, well, like, uh, placing down some foundations and going, yippee, let's go. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you should make a mental plan of what you're going to make. But yeah, you should do a little bit of uh, exploration and try to find out what you want. I think that's great advice. Because I am, I, I personally tend to just throw down and then build on what I have as I grow and expand but i think it would be cool to like get to that point where you couldn't envision what you would actually want and i think like i'm not saying that you can't do that oh yeah no i think that i i probably maybe should put a little bit more planning into it (laughs) personally because i'm very boring with like the square and rectangles you know so yeah i'm I'm not to interrupt but i'm with you sky i don't have any kind of plan i just start gathering stuff I see what foundations fit where. I think I want to do this, and then it doesn't snap because of whatever reason. Then I got to change it. So I just kind of go off the fly, and and uh, I end up with some really unusual right. structures. And I do envy those who can like plan out and foresee future growth. You know, I do. Yeah, me too. I think that's cool. Good but advice. But if you really think about it, like, I know a lot of people who have just started, like, throwing down foundations and have made some, like, really impressive stuff. But you should always have a basic of knowing what you're going to make. Like, he, like you don't just throw down three foundations and then say, I want to make a rectangle. You gotta, yeah. Right on. So, Mr. Amarachi, what are some Pimp My Hut tips that you've come across? It's pretty much some noob advice. It's like when you're running around looking for mats and stuff and you're gathering, you get too much wood or you get too much stone or anything, you can just build things on the spot so you don't become encumbered and you just get back to the heart, place everything and come back out again because you can become encumbered. I mean, you just you just stick to the ground, you won't be moving anywhere, but it will only take like five to ten seconds to build the stuff you want and just take them where you're going. That is a good point, and I don't think we've even covered that yet. So That's thank you for excellent. yes, that is a that is definitely a lifesaver. Absolutely. Had I learned that two weeks ago, I would have said just figured that out last week. And, oh, hey, Sky, oh, remember like when uh, we were on the server, not to be named, and and uh, you were telling me about the trikes and how you like them, and I finally got one, and and I came to you the the I don't know a day or two later, and I go. Holy crap, do you know these dinosaurs can carry stuff for us? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's how green I was when I started playing this game. Isn't it awesome, though? I was so impressed that you stayed playing this game. You know, honestly, because... Coming from World of Warcraft and our past gaming, you know, it's, it's it's night and day. And I was just really hoping that you wouldn't toss in the towel when you landed on, like, multiple deadly dinosaurs every time you spawned. So, I mean, man, if I could give you a trophy, I would. Because you, yeah, man, yeah. We've all been green. And and it's so cool that we get to grow. You get to grow and learn and share that advice. So that's what I think is cool about touching base with everybody because we're all at different levels of uh, of learning in the game and experience. and But we all have something to toss in. So, yeah, I do remember that. That was, that was too funny. Good stuff. <laughs> Moving on to our mod spotlight. Uh, we have Cole and Rocket have some mod love to spread. Cole wanted to talk about a Valhalla server that he found. So you want to get us started talking about that? Because we our server is an island for now because a lot of us are new and we haven't even explored the island. So why do we want to explore another landmass? But Cole likes to do so. So tell us a little bit about this Valhalla server that you've that you found well i just like to change it up for what 
mainly. Um, I like to, I love the island. Um, I love Valhalla, which is this gigantic, huge map that's just absolutely gorgeous and kind of has a Norse theme to it. Like even the, there's like a thunderclap, you know, when it starts to rain, it sounds kind of like Thor's hammer and stuff. Um, but this Valhalla server is, is very, very different than servers that I've ever played on uh, that, ha that use the Valhalla map mod. And it's called Valhalla Genesis. They have a ton of different mods on it. There's even a thing called like a shopping mod where you can sell stuff. Like if I have a whole bunch of extra berries that I'm not going to put into a dino or a trough or anything like that, I can sell the berries and then get like gold pearls and black pearls, which are the currency. Wow. And, okay. Yeah. It's, it's totally weird. Totally cool. Um, and then you can turn in turn, use that to buy flak armor or buy a compound bow or buy a saddle for a dino or, you know, things like that. Um, so it's like microtransactions without real money. I wanted to let you know all about it. So if you all are looking for something that's just totally different, um, they even have like a Stargate mod on it where you can put down a Stargate. And if anybody else has a Stargate, you can travel from your Stargate to their Stargate, like the TV oh, yeah, show. And, about that. and so there's all these different things and stuff that you can uh, do on this server. Um, and one of the, the coolest things that I've done in the last few days of playing on this server, they've got their dinos set up a different way. They've got the regular dinosaurs that are out there. You know, I think they go up to like a level 150 or something like that in the wild. But they've got different versions of dinos that are called elite, badass. Um, they have baby dinos walking around and you can tame them. They have uh, every single kind of dino. It can be an alpha and you can tame those alphas. And then there are alpha primes, which are like the regular alphas that you can't tame, which are totally, you know, scary. Ooh. But then there's like boss level type dinos. And it's it's totally crazy. And I love it. But my the best thing that ever happened, I was brand new on this server. I was running around trying to gather stuff to build a just a crap shack so I could log out. And I found this giant gold colored dodo. And it was called the Golden Dodo. And you can tame it. It looks like a giant chocobo from Final Fantasy. And so I tamed this thing and it's super, super fast and you can ride it without a saddle or anything. And so these elite dinosaurs that are out there, uh, you can tame. So I tamed an elite Dilo and you can mount it. And I tamed an elite dragonfly and I'm flying around like I'm a giant dragonfly. The bugs don't even bug me. <laughs> so is of, that like a mod? Do you is. know the it's name a, of the mod? Or? It's the Genesis mod. Oh, and, okay. Uh, it's it's crazy. So I just wanted to talk about this. I mean, a lot of people they may not you know know what the heck I'm talking about, but I would say uh, go to this uh, website for this other server. You know, look around. They have a list of all the mods that they use, so you can see what those mods are. And if you want something, you want to play ARC, but you want a completely different experience than you would be used to on the island, I would say uh, check that one out. And the website is uh, Valhalla, V-A-L-H-A-L-L-A, -L -L -A, Genesis, G-E-N-E-S-I-S, dot engine, E-N-J-I-N, dot com. And that's their website, and you can get all the information there. Valhalla is a beautiful, beautiful map. And uh, so, I mean, even if this server with all its mods aren't your flavor, I would say uh, definitely check out the different maps that are out there. Yeah, because there's like the center, I, the center, mm -hmm. I believe, is one. I've played on a pirate modded map. I yeah. Can't, it was really glitchy, though, and I wouldn't, I mean, the one I was on, I don't know if it's across the thing. Well, that's the one thing that's cool about the mods is that I almost look at it like progression because in my head, like, that's how I play. Like, I'm like, I haven't, that's how when I started it, like, I haven't, once I hit I, the island and I feel like I've sucked everything I can out of the island, then I feel like my next step is another landmass, you know? So I think it's really cool that people have uh, developed different spins because, that's a really big part of our end game when you're in ARC is a lot of like MMOs, once you hit the ceiling, you're like, well, now do I do I wait for another expansion? And that's why I think it's cool with the ARC is that there's so many different mods and different island maps and such that 
your end game is pretty much still a sandbox. So Mm -hmm. that's why I think it's cool that we can venture out onto other servers and share experiences because everybody hits their end game at different times. So Yeah, and that's pretty much why I try to play on several different kinds of servers because I don't want to get bored with the island. Yeah, you don't I don't want, want to. to get bored with, you know, the various places that I am because that's when I know I'm going to start stop losing my uh, you know, my my fun factor and yeah. my desire to keep playing. Yeah, yeah, your gas that keeps you logging in. Yep. Definitely. I I think that's cool. How about you, Mr. Rocket? Um I see you have some some uh, mod love you want to spread? Yes, I do. And I want to start out with a big shout out to Mr. Pelker. He's the main dev. He has three kids and he works eight hours a day. And for whatever reason, he still has time to work on the mod. And he's done an awesome job on it. It's called the Stark Wars mod. You can download it from the Steam community shop. I want to tell you guys something. It adds about 68 different new items that you can use. It adds blasters. It adds vehicles. It adds... Um, okay, so it adds like a lot of new dinos, it adds armor, it adds all this stuff, and it was, it was such a blast for me, because I tried it on a private server, and it was amazing. I just want to tell you guys that you guys should definitely check it out, Can and you unfortunately, put the link in the show notes? Have, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. It. But uh, Mr. Poker, he's a really nice guy, and he's done a really great job in his mod. Awesome. I know that you were definitely a fan, so <laughs> that is cool. He gave, Oh my god. Yo, there were like TIE fighters in there and stuff yeah, like that. That was awesome. awesome. That's that's why we definitely like spotlight spotlighting all the different mods that we come into during our travels because it definitely spices up your arc life. That's the most powerful trank gun on the market, huh? Got her in Mexico. Cool. Yeah, it is cool. They say it can puncture the skin of a rhino from a <laughs> Ow! Oh. oh Yes! That's awesome! So moving on to Taming Pen, we're going to, uh, who, we were undecided on this whole animal love, and one of our newest members, Mr. Lee, um, is actually thinking about putting together a Dino Spotlight 2 and sending it in, so that's all, also another option for our server members if they don't feel comfortable hopping on the podcast, uh, that they can actually make a little segment or something that um, we've all talked about. So he is going to be working out. He says it's going to be a surprise. So, but what are some taming pen topics that you wanted to cover? Like, I know Luminum was wondering, like, should we talk about, like, one of the first, di- like, one of the first dinos that everybody thinks you should tame? Like, what, I guess Dilo is the first thing that I always tame when I start playing is just... Yeah. One, I don't like being showered with a bunch of green goo. And two, they're kind of fun. They're like my little my little puppy dog in Ark. So They got a cute waggly tail. They do! Definitely. And you definitely can just go around club... Everybody will say club a, di- a, club a dodo. But I kill the dodo, get the meat, spoil the meat, work up so I can get my narcotics. And then my first tame, I for some reason I snub the dodos and I go right for the dilo. So, what is, uh, Rocket, like, what is your favorite thing to tame? Well, my favorite thing to tame overall is, a lot of you guys probably know this, I love taming carnivores. Like, on the last server, I had, like, five, no, wait, six binos and five rexes. Or something like that, right? Sure. Somewhere yeah. in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two stories. You can tell You're sure. you want. <laughs> Chocolate. Go ahead. Chocolate. <laughs> anyway, so if I were to touch on uh, solo taming big carnivores, I would let you guys know that you guys should always bring enough kibble, but always bring extra, because anything can go wrong. There's so many things that could go wrong, and I guess that you should always bring extra narcotics, too. Yes. Now, when taming them, when taming them, you should try to get them either one, you should try to get a Quetzal, and then you can sit on the back of it, because that's what I did with Turk a lot. Or, because I live next to a cliff, I got I, I got a lot of them like stuck on the cliff, and then that's how I tame them. So you recommend getting the carnivores stuck on objects or taming a Quetz and taming them from the Quetz? Well, because taming the quets would make it a lot easier, because I remember my days of being on the cliff, 
like so many things went wrong even then because sometimes the rexes would glitch on top of there sometimes something would come behind me and knock me off the cliff ah uh, <sighs> okay alrighty and luminin what kind of a dino were you thinking of for the taming pen well i might be a little bit biased but the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true just you know they have the ability to fly about freely swarming you and killing you and all be able to pick up friends be able to travel quickly uh, they're just extremely useful you can there there's some really good areas i, mean, I took uh uh Bo-Rick, one of the new players on our server down today uh, right across from Irby island you get that, that really flat cliff face uh you can a lot of times you can go out there and find them already stuck on the that's what we did today flew all the way out there at level 96 glitched into the cliff couldn't get out he shot it with four awesome. heroes and went down what? perfect tame yep wow congratulations that's awesome oh man air travel is such a yummy thing to have absolutely especially oh, you know, as a new player <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yes you do so how long do you just think wait. it'll be before he kills it um i don't know you know he did it all on his own i literally just took him there dropped him off gave him some of the basics so there's a copy let's not let that happen <laughs> yeah Yep, definitely. That's a big thing is learning to tame. And the whole thing with taming is like the compies, the the outer um, enemies that are like, oh, no, you think you're going to tame this turn on? I'm going to come in here and start chewing on it. And it could totally wreck it. So it's definitely a cool thing to be able to add on is not only do you have to guard your tame, you got to constantly stay aware. And then also, what like Rocket was saying, always have the right amount or overshoot your narcotics. Because what of, definitely, man, one of my pet peeves is the people that just log in, run out, shoot down a dinosaur, and then harass you in global chat for hours, demanding that you bring them what they need to tame this dinosaur. And because that irritates me, because I'm like, no, you must plan ahead. You must get your stuff and then go, not just log in, <laughs> shoot down something and go, I need narcotics stat that irritates the crap out of me so don't be those kind of people <laughs> any of that well, kibble yeah exactly i would like five <laughs> tons of kibble delivered <laughs> now <laughs> no not fair <laughs> yeah can i get a, a box of kibble delivered to my front door in yeah. like two seconds asap right and now bless on, the chop, hearts chop. Of, yeah bless the hearts of those who actually accommodate because i'm not one <laughs> I, you are amazing saints and arc the ones that jump to the call of the unprepared so yeah it's, but taming also can just happen on the fly too and then that's when you knock on your friends doors but you definitely don't harass everybody on the server so that's just that's just not a good thing to do <laughs> i was telling bo you know this is actually the exact spot from episode one where i tamed and aggroed that oh he wow. was laughing and i actually ran over one he was like don't you dare i know what it was <laughs> Uh, I actually <laughs> named that one Hulk. And I, or <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Speaking of a crazy Hulk Dodo, we are headed into our Enraged segments. Where Enraged Dodos run free. <laughs> and we're going to share something that we would like to see changed or something that we have seen others dislike in the community. I would like to see more tribe functions, daily messages, or an event calendar. I want more enhanced communications for, like, tools for the tribes. Like, maybe a place for a tribe info so that people can actually know where they are, how to get the voice communication information, how to find a website, what are the rules of the tribe, and all that jazz. So, I would like to see more love with that. Now, City, I can call on you. Now I can jump on your train. Yeah, I That's agree right. with all of those. Um, also, I would like to see um some way of being able to tell who all is on game um, when you're playing the only time that we know is the notification that somebody's entering or somebody's leaving we don't know if anybody else is on the tribe unless you actually start up a conversation um in in global chat or tribe chat and people don't always respond to that um and also i'm colorblind and i can't read luminous text thanks okay <laughs> I think as we fix that, we're good. <laughs> I totally agree. Usually what I'll do is before I load the server up, and people are online out of your Macs, 
and then I can kind of hop in and I'll say something. And if they don't respond or I log in and I'm like, I'm not going to get in teams. I'm not going to get into conversations. I just want to get in and you know, build this massive tower if you know, seven in the morning or whatever. And yep, yep. against all odds, you still would meet up with me, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you wanted help a spot for a new base, so I was... I was having trouble with that, though, because I couldn't decide, and I always have that issue. It does that enrage you, Rocket? Not finding a place to build. <laughs> no, he was ready to wipe all the rocks and all the trees and all the plants over. Probably. Just to see where it was flat land. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Amarachi? Do you have anything arc related that enrages you? Yes, yeah, these system requirements, they're terrible. I mean, come on, I've got an i7, I've got six gigabyte of RAM, dedicated video card, everything. And this, this game is just like, nope, I'm not having none of that. It just doesn't want to work properly. I end up using like like less memory or whatever that thing is right at the start. And still, it's just this game, this, this laptop just blows out hot air onto my mouse hand. It's just ter terrible to play with. Yeah, I yeah I I run everything medium, and then I like turn down my sky effects, and I turn down my ground clutter, and I just make all the extra like I get rid of all the extra bells and whistles to not have to deal with lag or um, my FPS is getting crazy. I totally understand how you feel. And I think well, Luminan does too because he, he bought an entirely new system just to play the game. So I didn't. Do, I know exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. How did, I was going to say how how is that? I mean, is that a PC or a laptop? It's a laptop. It, it's PC, but it's a laptop. But I, I mean, I had it designed and built for Arc. I've got 32 gigs of RAM, one of the best graphics cards for a mobile uh, system. What does it look like? Yeah. How, how how did it come out? It's beautiful. It really is. I yeah. play it on high. I leave it on medium, and I the ground clutter off, but that's just personal project for when I die, I can find it. But uh, it is. I've got a 4K screen on it, which they're adding in two. Th yeah, yeah, we that's need to talk, nice. because I want to buy one of those. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm, I, I negotiated with them for two hours and got them to drop $1,000 off. Ooh, of it, so. yeah. Wow. That's nice. So where did you get it? <laughs> like uh, asking the it. inquiry, the questions inquiring mind was what to know. <laughs> it's an Alienware, so it's it's through Dell. It's a gaming okay. laptop through them. Original price was like, and uh, you know, like I said, I talked to them for like over two hours. They called me. I talked to them again. Talked to them again the next night, and I still need to contact them because uh, one of the the carrying case that they charged me for. So I'm be like, hey, what's up with? This? Awesome! Wow! So congratulations, Luminant. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But for everybody else dealing with the system requirement barriers, Amarachi said, yeah, that definitely is something I believe that they even mentioned in the patch notes, like they are continually working on trying to cut down the performance draining aspects of the game. So I know that they know that this is a definite thing. Yeah, I probably should have mentioned that in patch notes. They are, they're, I've read this somewhere. They are going to ace system performance. I think it was 15. 15 to twenty percent. Yep. Which is huge. That's gonna be, I'm so excited for it. You know, it's like a catch twenty two year end. You want people to check out your game and love it and like it and promote it. And on the flip side, the barrier to entry is high, and you do end up turning a lot of people away, which is definitely hindering too. So yeah, it's definitely uh, a double edged sword. But you know what's not a double edged sword. <laughs> <laughs> our damn EQ segment where we will share our fails throughout the week. Did I do that? Luminan's kind of alluded to his his oh no, I sucked this week kind of a story, so we might as well just jump right in with you. Tell us what you All did right. this week. Yeah, that it's full well, of fail. I, I wasn't really feeling like gathering a resource going on a metal run. I was you know, I was kinda of derping around the base, just kinda of walking around staring at all my dinosaurs. And I said I, I was just like, you know what? I need to fill this map in a little bit. Of which I've actually had it wipe itself every time I log in. But uh, you know, I hop on my bird and I've got my my brand new long neck rifle and I don't know sixty darts, which took like everything I had to make. I got my metal armor on, which Turk was always always want to take it off and we're nice and safe. And he's like, it's useless if you're not using it. But uh, you know, I go flying out and I'm the swamp. And another thing that Turk was always yelling at me about was use a spyglass. So I had a spyglass and I had it in my three slot. And I'm flying over the swamp and I see something. I pull that spyglass out and I'm looking at oh, this is cool. I can see the level of it. Uh, I reached up to turn it off and bump the E key, which is pretty much right underneath. So I go tumbling through the air. <laughs> uh, in my head, I'm just going, well, yeah, I just did that. <laughs> Slam into the swampy ground. 
something came up. <laughs> of course, I died. You know, I'm all... so instead of uh, pulling that spyglass out, since I could probably see my bird, I grab another bird. I go flying out there again, and wouldn't you believe, I land and I, I manage to find my stuff. I start to grab it, and a snake come up and bit me, and I fell asleep <laughs> underwater. <laughs> so, you know, it, it bit me and it broke most of my armor, and then I guess it was hurt enough and it left because it took too much damage. I drowned <laughs> before I could woke, wake up. All right, round three. I hop on another bird. This session with birds or what, but I go flying on. I, I'm going out there. I'm okay. I'm not doing this. Again. I fly down there. I grab my stuff and I'm booking it back to the bird. Here comes the snake. I can hear it. Oh my gosh. No, not again. I managed to hop on the bird. I go taken off. I get stuck on something. And then I bump water. And immediately I'm off the bird in a Sarko tube. I was eating two bites. Oh, yes. I'm like at the point. I hate swamp. I'm yes. sorry, Turk. I know you're a swamp man, but swamp no. Swamp sucks. I can't, I can't do it. Uh, I made a fourth trip out there. I'm my last bird. Managed to get my stuff, find all my birds, press that J bands, made it back to the base, and vowed to never return to the swamp. Yeah. It's a dangerous place. Dang you you're on the front lines up there, city. I don't hear anything about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. City's pr city's in uh pretty rough territory. But the swamp, man, that's nothing to mess about. Like the like where up where city's at, there's like big things that you can see. Like the swamp. <laughs> It's like you get attacked by 90 birds, 20 copies, 40 freaking snakes. And then just Ugh, when the you bugs. see... Yeah, the bugs are ridiculous. And I think the compies and the bugs are working together. Because without... Oh, yeah. I swear to God, I get approached by a compie and then 90 million bugs. And I'm like, what the crap? Are you guys have like a gang? An annoying ankle biter gang? Because I'm always at the receiving end of your crap. Yeah. One's scalping you and the other one's collecting your toes. Totally. Yeah, so that was the the damn E uh, segment entry that you were like, raw, like you're like, oh my god, you were giving us play with like, oh my god, this just happened, and I felt I felt totally sorry for you. <laughs> I totally I, you're like, yep, kids are waking up from nap. Gotta yep. go. Like, I have to go. <laughs> I feel I feel sorry for you. Peace out. What I say? <laughs> yep. And then we go over to your alpha tips, and it's like, oh well, you know, don't bring everything that's important up when you don't. Yeah. Need it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she wrote that just for me. No, yeah. honestly, I didn't, but it totally applied for you, so. 100%, yeah. Drink my alpha tip. <laughs> right. uh, so, uh, we have, in our damn E-key segment, uh, mine, ha mine had something to do with you, Luminin, because I died and I didn't place beds, which kind of alluded to my own new Punchy Tree segment. I didn't place a bed yet. I don't know why that's normally the first thing I do, and that's why I'm telling everybody that's the first thing you should do, because I totally didn't do it this round. I didn't. And I died. I was trying to tame a Dodicarus over on Death Corner, which is that northern west coast corner of death where you see, like, Argents attacking scorpions, eating T Rexes with raptors. It's like a big right yeah. up there by the cold, right, right at the yeah, the right, cold biome. yeah, yep. right before the cold, the cold biome starts on the west coast, which actually is where I go to get my pearls and my oil and all that, um, and do it naked, and then bring lots of food and apparently lots and lots of food because City said you were just mowing down on the food and it wasn't. I so, ate ninety in like ten seconds. Yeah, Didn't even help. I, I have to take a boat. With a crap load of fires and a and a preserver loaded with food, and I just I I just put my leather on or whatever. Unless you have like pelt to throw away, just jump into because there's a whole bunch of death over there, like cats and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, I digress. I died a lot, and I didn't have a bed to spawn in. And ideally, my bed would have been on my boat that was like five feet from my carcass. But no, the closest bed was Oluminin's bed out in BFE. I had no idea. I had spawned in your house. I spawned in your bed, and it was like you. I don't even think you had a roof on your place at the time. But one of your bed, it said it was like a like a future building place or whatever. It was like the middle of the map. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. I had to run my naked butt all the way through the woods, died again, died again. So I hung out at your house multiple times, used your bed, you had no clue. <laughs> because... well, actually, the bed's outside. <laughs> oh my, thank <laughs> god, man. Oh. 
Yeah, because there wasn't anything built. Like, there wasn't a roof over me. I just spawn and run out and die. Spawn, run out and die. Spawn, run out and die. Finally made it to where I knew where I was at, that I could get back to my boat. It was a hot mess. So now I just put both put beds everywhere. Beds everywhere. Yeah. Screw pillars. Drop a bed. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a good alpha tip. Yeah. Put yeah. A three high pillar, throw a bed on top. Oh, my God. It was ridiculous. It. Yeah, so that was my yeah. I should have known better, but uh, so you should have known better than go. To yeah, yeah, you were the closest one. Like nobody was building over on the west coast, and I didn't actually. To be honest, Goon has a bed, but I figured it was locked behind his door, and I would choose. Like I didn't. I knew that he had walls, but I was a fifty-fifty chance that you did. I didn't know where your bed was at. So once I saw that it was like not in a building, it was. It was definitely a 50-50 chance I was taking spawning in somebody's bed. <laughs> but I was going to be locked behind their walls until they logged in. So, Fun times. Speaking of fun times, anybody? <laughs> Mr. Amarachi, do you have a damn E-key to share? Oh, God, yeah, I do. It's not so much the E-key, though. It was oh, just, no. Yeah. I just dropped my one of my trikes near the water. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go and get some hide and some meat. Because I think I was about level eight or nine, and I was I needed to build a little catapult. I needed to you know start making some clothes, some sandals, and some gloves. And I just left a trike there, and I left him on on I think he was aggressive or something. So I just I put a toe into the water. I'm like that piranha there. Yeah, I could kill that. <laughs> as soon as I touched it. Oh my god, my trike jumps in, and then there's like 10, 20, 30 of these piranhas. <laughs> they, my my trike, you know, he's brave or she. Her name was Sarah. Oh my god, she was just like brave, and you know what? I took a step back. I'm like, sort it out. Some of the piranhas, I think they were like fifty, level fifties or sixties, and my trike was a level twelve. Uh, Welcome yeah. to Ark. <laughs> dear god, right? dear. Oh my god. <laughs> and yeah, you said like look at, and then. Just like typical, the body sits there, and you're like, "Oh!" It was there for about half an hour. I'm like, I, yeah. foot, I, 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 I put my foot outside the base. I'm like, User yeah, it's channel. still there. Yeah, you're just thinking, oh, my God, I the body is still sitting out there. And... Still, it was there for about half an hour, nearly an hour. I was yeah. like, oh, God, I did that, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, totally. Definitely salt, salt on your wound. So, yeah, that's definitely a... Uh... A, a worthy damn key and definitely something to do as you were saying that that all that happened was because you forgot to put your your tricon passive before you pump before you punch that mega piranha yeah she was like i'll save you i'm not i don't need saving i mean i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go and get some meat and a little bit higher than uh there you go yeah she's dead she's dead so turk you entered just that last call buddy Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Perfect timing, I, man. No, I just want to share with him. What's his name? Emirati? Emirati! Emirati, I got a secret nickname for you, bro. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, shoot. Do you, do you know what it is? <laughs> no. Oh, God. Rumors don't spread enough. Hey, Emo I, I wasn't going to say that. Yeah, Emoji John, I call you. <laughs> Emoji John. <laughs> yeah. When you first on, you were like, hey guys, what's up? And smiley face, smiley face. <laughs> they didn't know who you he's were, like, and they're like, oh my god, who is this person? I'm like, no, he's cool, I know him. They're like, he's Emoji John. <laughs> so that's your new tag, bro. Okay, man, it's wicked. <laughs> Cheers, yeah. Uh, it's me. <laughs> yeah, Rocket, what's up? Uh, unfortunately, I can't say my other thing with Turk around, but yeah. Oh, okay, I can leave, I can leave. <laughs> He has this whole User setup. Left your channel. You, you mean, <laughs> He's not going to listen to the podcast either. He probably won't. He probably won't. Okay, so, yeah, what is this? <laughs> With your last call, Rocket. So I was talking to Turk earlier, and then I accidentally called him Turkey once, so he got, like, really mad. <laughs> they I was like, hey, Turkey, like where do you want this hour? word? <laughs> Hey, Turkey, where do you want this wood? <laughs> and then he stares at me for like five minutes and he's like, What'd you say, Red Rocket? <laughs> and then he explained to me what Red Rocket meant. Oh my lord. So, what is this picture we're looking at? It's a cat. Oh, that's you. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Last week and this week. It's what my birthday. 
Happy birthday, dude. <laughs> happy birthday. Yeah, happy so, birthday. So, joined your channel. So, how old are you gonna be, Rocket? I'm going to be 15. Woo woo! Happy Seriously? birthday. What? I told you we are all we are all like specters of the of the gambit of age and experience and actually guys everything. I'm sorry I'm actually turning six I'm really sorry for lying to you guys. <sighs> yeah I was turning six that explains a lot that explains why you yeah. murdered me on my own draft <laughs> yep <laughs> so we will definitely include this picture in our show notes but also I wanted to uh, say happy holidays in and off of the arc so. This is Last Call. You can get a hold of us on Twitter at Rated Arc. You can subscribe and follow all of our jazz at RatedArc.Podbean.com. You can find us on iTunes, Stretcher Radio, when Google Play gets their crap together, all that stuff. So, yeah. Anybody want to tell us out anything else before we wrap the show up? Google Play. I don't know. Maybe uh, happy birthday? Yeah, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Yes. And welcome, welcome for your first recording, Amarachi and Mr. Red Rocket. Is that what you called yourself? <laughs> oh, did somebody tell that story? <laughs> oh my God. Red Rocket. <laughs> All right, bye everybody. Thank you for listening. Turkey. See you guys. Yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> bye. It's live. It's live. Two thirty-seven is live. Two thirty-seven is live, people. Survivors, go get them eggs. Bye, bye.